impact and its power, you don't communicate effectively. Today, we do care about algebra, history, and science. We see them not as mere adjuncts, but as subjects that go to the very heart of technical education in the modern world. The age is long past when we can make sharp distinctions between academic excellence on the one hand and technical, vocational, and career education on the other hand. It was Alfred North Whitehead, the greatest of American philosophers, who said, the antithesis between technical and liberal education is fallacious. There can be no adequate technical education which is not liberal and no liberal education which is not technical. That is, no education which does not impart both technique and intellectual vision. And so we must look again at that debate between Booker Washington and W.E.B. Du Bois. From the vantage point of the 1890s, the 1980s rather, we look back on the early history of Tuskegee with pride. We look back on it also with some mixed feelings. If we are candid, and candid we must be. Booker Washington and his success at Tuskegee were easily the dominant story in black education at the turn of the century. And yet, it was a success that aroused anguish and anger among many people. The final 20 years of Booker T. Washington's life, the years of his greatest eminence and influence, was also the period when lynching was at its peak and when blacks were systematically deprived of their civil rights across the length and breadth of the South. It was a foul and evil time. Washington was clearly not to blame for this. But the turmoil and the challenge of the time demanded a political activism as well as a sense for the needs of economic development. And that political activism, it was not Booker's task to provide. As a result, the very success of Tuskegee aroused the ire and the anger of his critics in the black community. Most prominent of these critics was Du Bois. When you look at them, what a remarkable, extraordinary pair of human beings. W.E.B. Du Bois with his goatee, his spats on his shoes and his cane, his obvious cosmopolitanism, his class. Booker T. Washington, a son of the soil, born in poverty, never having known much of what Du Bois could take for granted. Both brilliant, remarkable men. But the argument and the debate that still flows in the undercurrents of American black higher education between these two men. Today, it is impossible to look back on that time without a feeling of overwhelming sense of tragedy. For it seems utterly unreasonable that great black educators of that time should have been torn between the complementary goals of economic advance on the one hand and cultural and political advance on the other.